in this video, we're going to talk about what we call the chain rule. The chain rule actually has to do with a compos composition of functions. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a review of compositions of functions, review how they work, and then we'll get to the derivative using the chain rule. Remember before we've learned a bunch of rules, ex how to take the derivative of the natural log function, the natural exponential function, the exponential function at base A, linear functions, power functions, and then we can do the sum and the difference of two functions to get more complicated functions, and then we can do composition of functions to get more complicated functions. And this is going to be the goal, being able to take derivatives of functions that can be even thought of as compositions of functions. And so just as a review, I have the expression x plus 1 quantity q, right? This can be thought of as an inside and an outside function situation, right? That's the composition of function. That's how they work, right? For this example, if we were to think of this as inside, outside, the function that's on the inside, the first thing that's done to the x is we're adding 1, and the last thing we're doing is we're cubing that sum, to, uh, cubing that sum, right? And so my inside function can be thought of as x plus 1, and my outside function is, remember, whatever you're doing to that inside function, and since we're raising it to the third power, I'm going to write x cubed as my outside function. That way, if we do a composition, right, our composition is saying put the inside function inside of our outside function. Notice I'm using I for inside and O for outside. We could use F and G of, of G of X, but I chose to do those because kind of, it's kind of more meaningful. And remember, when I see O of I of X, that means to take the expression for O, sorry, I, and put it wherever we see an X in our outside function expression which means we get that x plus 1 quantity cubed, right? And so remember, we could always check ourselves to see what that composition of functions would be. And so since that works correctly, then we've chosen the inside and outside function correctly, all right? And so this is just some work to verify that we did that correctly. And so one of the things that helps us to do the actual chain rule is to actually be being able to identify the inside and the outside function. And so with these two examples here, I just want to go through the process of being able to visually see what the inside and the outside functions are. I'm going to call the outside function I of X. Sorry, the inside function I of X and the outside function O of X, right? And so in this example, 3 minus X squared is my inside function and then X to the seventh is my outside function. Whereas in this example here, my inside function, and I'm writing the inside second, sorry, but that's 1 plus t squared, and what we're doing to that 1 plus t squared, we're taking the natural log of it, so the natural log of t is my outside function. Now, one of the things that I want you to notice is that when our, our functions are separated in this manner, um, if we were to just look at our inside and our outside functions separately, this would be, this outside function would be a very simple derivative to take. And I would have to use a couple of rules here, but I could also take that derivative separately, right? The same thing happens in part B here. My outside function, there's a derivative rule that help, that tells me how to take a derivative of the natural log of t, and then I can find a derivative of 1 plus t squared. But what we're going to learn with the chain rule is how do we take those different derivatives and put them together in order to give us the derivative um, of a function that is that composition. That's our goal here. And so to find a derivative of functions that can be broken down into inside and outside functions, we use the chain rule. Um, with this chain rule, now I'm going to switch back to f and g. f is going to be my outside function, and g is going to be my inside function, as I can see here, where I have my, uh, my equation y equals my composition of functions f and g. To get how the chain rule works, let's go back to what the composition is uh, conceptually, right? So let's say I have a, a set of x values. What this is telling me to do is to first apply that function g to my input values x, and that's going to give me a set of values that, that I'm going to call g of x. And then it says to take those g of x values and use it as the input into your function f. So then I'm going to have another function, which is f. And when I apply that f to those input values g of x, that's how I get f composed with g of x. Now, my goal is to be able to find a derivative of a function like that, right? Well, the derivative 
is going to involve both pieces. It's going to involve this G and it's going to involve this F. It's going to involve the derivative of G and it's going to be involving the derivative of F, right? So if I say D dx, the derivative of F of G of X, that is going to involve the derivative of G. Now I do my derivative of G and my input value for G is X values, as we can see in this uh, picture here. And I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of F, but it's not just going to be F of X because the input value for my function F is uh, G of X. So it's going to be F of G of X. Now, a lot of times people like to write this part first and this part second. And so generally you will see the formula for the derivative of a composition of F with G as F prime of G of X times G prime of X. And in words, this derivative is basically the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function or with the inside function present times, that means multiplication, the derivative of the inside function, okay? So it's the derivative of the outside function with the inside function sitting there times, that means multiplication, uh, the derivative of the inside function, right? This is what our derivative is generally going to equal. And so if I can find my derivative of my outside function, now I'm going to change my notation here. I'm going to use O for outside. So it, if I use O for my outside function, and I for my inside function, then it's going to be my outside function's derivative with the inside sitting there, or evaluated at the inside function. And I have to remember to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. All right. And so let's look at a couple of examples or several examples where we do this derivative. So here I have f of x equals 2x cubed minus 4x. And we're going to take that quantity and raise that to the fourth power. And so what I want to do is I want to figure out what my inside function is and what my outside function is. All right. Well, my inside function is 2x cubed minus 4x. And what we're doing to that 2x cubed minus 4x is raising that to the fourth power. So my outside function is x to the fourth. Now, my derivative involves the derivative of the outside function with the inside function sitting there, and it involves the derivative of the inside function, right? And so I'm going to do each of these functions derivatives. For instance, the derivative of my outside function is 4x cubed, and the derivative of my inside function is 6x squared minus 4. Now, this inside function's derivative is, is what we need in the formula. It is sitting here, right? That is sitting there. This outside function is not finished because we actually need the outside function's derivative evaluated at the inside function. So what I need to do is I actually would like to have I O prime of I of X, not O prime of X. That means I need to take this function or the inside function, which is here, and wherever I see an x, I need to put it into my outside function's derivative. So what I'm going to have here is a 4. And instead of writing x, I'm going to put the inside function, which is 2x cubed minus 4x to the third power, right? So all I've done was taken my inside function here and put it wherever I see an x, which is here, in my derivative of my outside function. And now I have this part of my derivative. So if I want to know what f prime of x is in this example, it is the outside function's derivative with the inside function sitting there, which is 4 times 2x cubed minus 4x cubed. And I multiply that by the derivative of my inside function, which is 6x squared minus 4. Okay, that is our derivative. Let's go to part B. Now I have the natural log of 4x squared plus 7, right? 
So I'm going to have my inside function and my outside function because this is the composition of function. My inside function is 4x squared plus 7. And my outside function is the natural log of x. All right, it's the natural log of x because that is what I'm doing to my inside function, right? <clears throat> Now, what I want to do is I, I want you to get to the point where you don't have to write all of these steps. So I want to talk you through this. Now that I know what my outside function and my inside function are, I want to be able to write the derivative with that knowledge. For instance, my function's derivative is going to be the derivative of the outside, and I'm going to copy this formula here. So the derivative of the outside with the evaluated at the inside is the derivative of the outside with the inside sitting there, right? Well, my outside function is ln of x. So the derivative of that will be 1 over x. But since it has to be evaluated at the inside function, instead of it being just 1 over x, it's going to be 1 over whatever is inside that natural log function, which is 4x squared plus 7. All right. Then we multiply that by the derivative of our inside function, which is a polynomial. Um, the derivative of 4x squared is 8x. The derivative of 7 is 0. You don't have to write that here, um, but I have. And remember, this is over 1. And so I can write this as a single fraction as 8x over 4x squared plus 7. That's the derivative. So once I knew that what my outside function was, and I already know how to take the derivative of the natural log of x, it's 1 over x. But because that's not just the x sitting there, we have an inside function. Instead of writing 1 over x, I've got to do 1 over the inside part of this composition, which is the 4x squared plus 7. Then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is that 8x. Let's look at another example. Here I have y equals 3 to the 4 times t, right? Now notice this 4 times t is the exponent, right? I have a base raised to the exponent. So I do have an inside-outside situation going on here because I don't just have a t as my exponent. It's 4 times t. For instance, my inside function in this case would be 4t. And my outside function, notice here, I'm using the function of t. Um, is 3 to the t, all right? Notice if I were to place that t in this part right here with 4 to the t, I'd get what I started with. And so now that I have that, I'm ready to write my derivative, right? So remember, by our chain rule, it's, it's the derivative of the outside, but with the inside sitting there, I'm using t instead of x's here, times the derivative of my inside function, right? So dy dt is going to equal the derivative of my outside, right? Well, the derivative of 3 to the t, now I'm going to write this out. It's normally 3 to the t times the natural log of 3, right? However, I don't just put the derivative of the outside. I have to place the inside function wherever I saw that t. So it's going to be 3 to the 4t times the natural log of 3. That is just this part here. I've got to go further and multiply that by the derivative of my inside function. This is a linear function. The derivative of a linear function is its slope, so it's going to be times 4, okay? And that is my, my derivative, all right? Or right, you can put the 4 in parentheses like that. It doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it as just times 4. Let's go to part D. In part D, we have P equals 100E to the negative 5T cubed plus 2e to the t minus 1. For me to find this derivative, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each part separately, okay? And I'm going to try to find out what rule that I need to use, right? I'm going to actually write some stuff. Well, the derivative of negative 1, that's the, the constant rule, right? I know I need to use the constant rule to do that derivative. Oh, this is my exponential rule. But this example here, 100e to the negative 5t cubed, this is actually a chain rule. Notice here I have just e to the t. That doesn't involve a chain rule because that's a basic derivative formula. But when I have more than just a t there, like in this example I have a negative 5t cubed, I actually have to use the chain rule. 
Now my chain rule is only on this part right here. So I'm going to do a little scratch under here and I'm going to focus on this part right here while I'm writing my scratch. I'm going to just write what my inside and my outside functions are, okay? Um, and I'm going to use t as my variable because I need to have t instead of x's. I want to be correct. My inside function is negative 5t cubed and my outside function is 100e to the t, right? Because all I have to do is replace that t here with the negative 5t cubed and I get what I started with. And so now that I know my inside and my outside functions, I, I can go ahead and start to figure out what my derivative is, right? Well, the derivative of 100e to the t, if I do that derivative, remember we said that the derivative of e to something, uh, e to the t is e to the t when we do that derivative with respect to t, all right? And so this is a constant multiple times, you know, a constant multiple of e to the t. So it's going to be e to the t, but this is a chain rule. And so my derivative doesn't just involve the e to the t. It involves e evaluated at the inside function. So I have to put that negative 5t cubed there, right? Then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. And my inside function is actually negative 5. That is not right. Negative 15t squared. So I've done a derivative of my first part here. This is the derivative of the first part. All right, plus I got to do the derivative of 2e to the t. Well, the, this just follows the regular rule. This is no longer a chain rule. So that's just going to be plus 2e to the t. And the derivative of minus 1 is 0. Right. And so this is the other part of my function. So this one had to involve the chain rule. Here is my exponential rule and my derivative of a constant rule. And so my derivative overall. Um, now I have a 100 here and a negative 15. That'll be a negative 1500 times T squared. All right. I just wrote this. I brought this and multiplied that out front because when you multiply, the order doesn't matter. And it's still multiplied by times E to the negative 5T cubed. And then my second term is plus 2e to the t, and I don't have to write that zero there, okay? So this is our chain rule. Let's look at one more example. Uh, it says the demand cur curve for a product is given by q equals f of p. So q is a function of p. So my input value is p for price, q is for quantity, is 1,000e to the negative 0.25p where Q is the quantity sold and P is the price of the product in dollars. Find F prime of two, all right? Well, if I want to find F prime of two, the first thing I need to find is F prime of P. All right, I need to find a derivative. Now, this derivative requires that I use the chain rule. And the reason why I know I need to use the chain rule is because this is not just E to the variable, it's E to something that involves more than the variable. So I have that inside outside relationship going on, right? My inside part of my function is that power there, negative 0.25p. And then my outside function is what I'm doing to that power, or what I'm doing to the inside part, it is actually the exponent on that e in the expression uh, 1000 e to the negative 0.25p. All right, and what I did there was almost correct. I just rewrote the function, all right? It's gonna be e to the p. That negative 0.025p is the input or the inside function, because if I go and replace this here, I'm going to get what I started with. So now I have, know that I have an inside-outside situation, a composition of functions. Remember, my derivative is O prime of I of P times I prime of P. And when I wrote that that way, I now see that I didn't use my correct input variable. So as you can see, your professor, your instructor, sometimes messes that up too, but we don't want to mess that up, all right? Or if we mess it up, we want to be able to correct it, right? So F prime of P, that's going to equal what the derivative of my outside. I love E to the X or E to the P, right? Because its derivative is also E to the X or E to the P, right? And so since I have a constant multiplied by that, it is going to be 1,000 E to that power, but we have to remember that we have to evaluate it or put our input function in there. So it's going to be e to the negative 0.25p 
but we have to remember that we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, and my inside function is linear, so it's going to be multiplied by negative 0 0.25, okay? And so now that I have that, I can simplify because that is a number, right? I can do this uh, 1,000 times that negative uh, 0.25. When you multiply by 1,000, it's the same thing as multiplying or moving your decimal three places to the right. So we get negative 250 e to the negative 0.25p. Now that we have that, we can find f prime of 2. And we can have an equality here instead of an approximation. Well, we're probably round, but now that we have that, we can put this in our calculator. And so I'm going to put 250, or negative 250, negative 250 e to the negative 0.25 times 2. And we get approximately ne negative 151. 0.63, negative 151, uh-oh, 0.63, if I rounded it to two decimal places. All right, and so now that we have that, we can give the units. And so our units here, um, my output variable is Q, is the quantity sold, and P is the product, uh, the price of the product, right? So my output is products, so it's going to be products per, and my input here is dollars per dollar, okay? Output over input gives you the units. All right, and that concludes what we have in this video. We'll see you in the next video.